As I've mentioned in earlier videos, the two fundamental steps of machine learning are first, write out a probability model, next, fit it using maximum likelihood estimation. To do this, we need to be able to find a formula for the likelihood from the probability model that we've written down. Typically, the process goes something like this. We might start with code, like this code I've got on the bottom left. Then, write it in random variable notation, because it's generally easier to do algebra with that than with code. Next, do some maths to find the cumulative distribution function. Finally, differentiate, and we get the density function. Um, this code here is for a continuous random variable. If it was a discrete random variable, then we'd want the probability mass function, not the density function, and often the maths would lead us directly to that, so we wouldn't need to go via the distribution. But this is the general picture. What I want to stress here is that when we talk about random variables and probability models, all of these four descriptions are exactly as good as each other. They're all describing the same thing. None is the correct way to write out a probability model. They're just different views of exactly the same thing. So when you're reasoning about probability models, you're free to choose whichever view is easiest to work with for the problem you're currently working on. If you're running simulations, the code view is obviously what you want. But for maximum likelihood estimation, the density function, the probability density function, is the view that's most important to us. Or if it's discrete random variables, the probability mass function. So that's what we're going to work on in this video. Now, you'll have noticed that I keep on repeating myself. I've had to say every sentence twice, once for the continuous random variable case where I say PDF, and once for the discrete random variable case where I say PMF. This does get to be a real nuisance, especially because most of the formulae we use in machine learning work just the same, whether it's a continuous random variable or a discrete. And so the first thing we want to do is get some better notation. This is the better notation. For a random variable x, we define the likelihood function PR subscript capital X to be either the probability mass function or the probability density function, depending on whether the random variable is discrete or continuous. It's written PR subscript capital X, open brackets, lowercase x. And when I say it aloud, I'll say, the likelihood for big X of little x. Um, if the random variable takes parameters, I like to write it with a semicolon, because here the outcome little x and the parameter theta are playing two completely separate roles. And often, when it's not interesting, I'll just omit the parameters, the stuff after the semicolon, just to save time. Now, the job of this notation is to keep track of two separate things. There's the random variable big X, which is the function that gives different answers each time you call it. And there's the value little x, which is one possible output value. And it's useful to keep both of them in our notation for when we build up more and more complicated probability models like this one here. This says, generate X and Y, add them together, and then asks, what's the likelihood of getting the outcome 0.2? It's a very, very dense notation, this. It's enough to make any mathematician rub her hands with glee. If we have a pair of random variables, we generally want to reason about both of them together. And for this, we write PR subscript big X comma big Y. This means the probability of seeing particular outcomes little x, little y for both of them at the same time. Formally, we could just say, let z equal x comma y be a random variable, which returns a tuple. And then pr sub x comma y is just the probability mass function of z. Formally, it's the probability that the random variable z takes value little x comma little y.
If we have a pair of continuous random variables, it's a bit more work to say what the likelihood actually is. Then we'll leave the maths of that to the next section of the course. All that matters for now is that we know how the likelihood function behaves. That's what this next slide is about. If two random variables, x and y, are independent, then the likelihood function factorizes. The likelihood of seeing little x comma little y is the likelihood of seeing little x times the likelihood of seeing little y. This applies to collections of more than two random variables, of course, and in particular it applies to what's called a random sample. Often in machine learning we have a data set that we choose to model as a collection of independent random variables, all drawn from the same distribution. Let's call it capital X. Then, by independence, the likelihood of the entire data set is just the product of the likelihoods of each of the individual terms. So this is how the likelihood notation works. The point of this notation is to make our life easier by saving us the hassle of having to write out different versions, one for discrete, one for continuous, and possibly others for any other type of random variable we might come across. So here's an example of how our life is made easier. Maximum likelihood estimation again. We saw this in the very first video. Let's just look at the proper way of stating what maximum likelihood estimation is. If we've seen an outcome, little x, and we've proposed a probability model, capital X, and if its distribution involves some unknown parameters, theta, the maximum likelihood estimator for theta is, well, the theta that maximizes the likelihood. The point here, though, is that x could be anything at all. It could be a single value or it could be an entire data set. At the beginning of this course, when we introduced maximum likelihood estimation, we said maximize the probability of the data. But that's not a very good way to put it. The trouble is, if x is a continuous random variable, then the probability it takes any specific value is always equal to zero. So that definition was no good. That's why we prefer to say maximize the likelihood of the data rather than saying maximize the probability of the data. Now, since likelihood is such a central quantity in machine learning, we need to be able to derive it, for example, from source code. There's no general purpose way of doing this. It's just a matter of being creative with probability calculations. Here's the sort of question we'd like to be able to answer. Find the density of the random variable generated by this code, def r y. I'll first of all let x be a uniform random variable, then this function ry returns x squared. For continuous variable problems like this, there's a strategy that's often helpful. Let's look again at the four ways of viewing a random variable that we saw at the beginning of this video. There's the code view. We can translate the code into math style random variable notation. Then we'll do some clever maths to find the cumulative distribution function, the CDF. This is the hard part. It's just a matter of plain probability cleverness. Next, we'll differentiate to get the likelihood, i.e. the density, because we're talking here about continuous random variables. So let's go ahead and do it for this particular problem. First, I'll write it out in maths notation x is a uniform of not one random variable, y equals x squared. Now, I want to work out the CDF, so I'll write out what we're after, the cumulative distribution function, probability that big Y less than or equal to some value little y. I'm going to be really meticulous here and be careful about the ranges. If little y is less than zero, the probability of seeing big y less than or equal to little y must be zero. It's just plain impossible for this function to return a value less than zero. Also, this function absolutely always returns a value less than or equal to one. In other words, if little y is larger than one, 
the probability that our outcome is less than or equal to little y is equal to 1. So those are the two simple cases. It's only the intermediate case where y is in the range 0 to 1 where we have to do some calculations. My strategy here will be to rewrite probability expressions in terms of simpler standard random variables because they're the things that we should know how to deal with. Here, y is the outcome of our custom random variable code and x is a standard random variable. So I'm going to rewrite this as probability that y less than or equal to little y is equal to the probability that big X squared is less than or equal to little y. I'm just using the fact big Y is equal to big X squared. If I want to simplify it some more, I want to make it into a probability that X lies in some range. So I'll just sketch a graph of the function X squared. This lets me rewrite the probability that I'm interested in as the probability that big X lies in the range minus square root of Y to plus square root of Y. Finally, I'm going to put this into a slightly simpler form. This last line is just based on standard Venn diagram reasoning. And now that I've put in this form, I can just bung in the cumulative distribution function of the uniform distribution. X is uniformly distributed. And this, the CDF of a uniform distribution, is something you should just know, you should be familiar with. You should know uniform distribution and normal distribution. So I'm just going to stick that in here, and that gives me the answer. Probability that big Y less than or equal to little y is equal to square root of little y. Finally, to get to the likelihood for y, we just differentiate the CDF, and this is what we get. Great, we're done. This is how you find likelihoods, at least for continuous random variables. There's a lot more of this sort of maths in section 4 of the print of notes if you're interested in it, but I won't be covering it in videos. This course is much more about the uh, machine learning side rather than the math side. So this is what calculating a likelihood looks like. You can answer pretty much any machine learning question at all if you can just calculate the likelihood. And you can be endlessly creative in turning real world questions into probability models. Here's another example. This is a mock exam question. And you can see video walkthroughs of mock exam questions on the course webpage. So I'm not going to go through the answer to this question right now. I'll just summarize it. Basically, this is a question about signal detection. We're imagining someone sending a signal to us, a binary signal, and we want to detect when that signal flipped from zero to one, but we've only got noisy readings. So the question asks us to set up a probability model for the noisy readings, find the likelihood, and then run maximum likelihood estimation, and the MLE will be our estimate for when the signal flipped. In the next two videos, we'll look at probability models for the two main types of problem that you come across in machine learning, unsupervised learning and supervised learning.